Hey guys, it's Jordan here from Switchwatch. Hope you are having a great weekend. Today I've got a review of Breaks Are For Losers. Now the question of today is, what is your favorite party game on the system? Which game do you like to bust out when you've got friends over? Let us know in the comments below. Let's get on with it. Breaks Are For Losers is a top-down racing game from Plug In Digital. The company has had a variety of games released on the Nintendo Switch, and this is yet another cheap, cheerful game to add to that. But does the price come at a cost of the quality? Let's find out. As you would expect from a game of this kind and price point, the story is non-existent. There is a single player campaign, but it is bereft of anything story-wise. Moving on. The sound of the game is a bit of a high point in most places. There's an eclectic mix of different genres, upbeat tracks to listen to while screeching around each race course. It's all of decent quality too, which is probably not what you'd expect when initially coming into this game. Well, aside from the main title screen, which the song is just absolutely awful. But anyways, the rest of the music is pretty good. The sound effects are a little less impressive though, as they definitely come across as a bit stock and flat. Not bad overall though. The game is on the simple side when it comes to graphics, um, that comes with the territory for the genre though, you don't see too many top down races with detail in them. Even games like Mantis Burn Racing that went for realism lacked detail. The cartoony nature is pleasing on the eyes if a little on the bland side, lacking any kind of personality that you'd hope to find in a wacky racing game. At the end of each race the camera tends to zoom in a lot which unfortunately shows the low resolution of the assets in the game. Performance wise I didn't notice too much of an issue, there was often a small jolt or two in every race where a frame may have been missed or it seemed like the game was loading or something, either way it was noticeable but it didn't really affect anything important. The gameplay is reaching back to older classic racing games as it's in a top down perspective. It's definitely in the realm of something like RC Pro-Am, although this is straight down rather than from an isometric viewpoint. I'm sure games like these will resonate well with plenty of you old school gamers out there. While not every game needs to boast some sort of gimmick, Breaks Are For Losers definitely does and it's in the title. There are no brakes at all. In an even bigger twist, there's no acceleration at all, your car moves forward automatically and all you need to do is concentrate on turning. It's different for sure, although I'm not particularly sure how interesting it is overall. There are a few other things thrown into the mix to stop it from getting too bland. For a start you have a boost that you can do, although that's not unlimited. Your car has an energy bar that goes down as you smash around the track. If this runs out you will pause to repair. To manage that you will have to judge entries into the pit stops to refill your health and boosts. Finally there are power ups laid around the tracks that if you run over you'll automatically use. These are your classic oil slicks, bombs, ice balls, temporary confusion, nothing you've not seen done before in these kind of games. The game has a small variety of game modes although you'll probably be mostly interested in the championship mode which provides 10 consecutive races between 8 opponents, giving points at the end of each stage and then totaled up at the end. Between stages you can upgrade various aspects of your car with cash that you receive. Another surprise is the way for victory is not what you'd expect. While you can still set it to the amount of laps to complete, the primary way to win is by completing as many laps in a set amount of time. When the time runs out, the player with the most laps wins. If you want something a bit different, there are the challenges in the game in the form of time attack or perfect races. Time attack is what you'd expect and perfect race tasks you with driving the longest distance possible without touching the wall. If you do so, the counter resets. Fans of challenge modes will probably relish these more than the main section of the game to be honest, although this is not something that gets me excited personally and it did get a little repetitive fairly soon. They are also fiendishly difficult, I genuinely struggled barely getting to one flag out of the potential three. It's really difficult. The gameplay as a whole is all very safe and a little unthrilling when played in single player. The game comes more alive when friends join the party. Up to eight, yes eight people can enter the fray. Now as a married man living abroad with a baby on the way, it's safe to say that I'm not exactly swarmed with friends willing to participate in racing mayhem. The 8 player mode is obviously a big selling point although it's not one that I'm able to experience. With just a handful of people it was a pleasant fun experience for people of just about all ability. 
Older, less experienced gamers may struggle to wrap their head around the perspective of turning, but they'll get the hang of it and probably contribute to the fun. Obviously, the more people, the better, but you can still enjoy the multiplayer with just a couple of extra people. I'm not entirely sure how long it will keep everyone's attention until you want to move on to a different game or activity. It's not a bad option for the price though. And that leads me nicely onto the value. As the game is on the cheaper end of things, less than $5 and pounds, I think it's a respectable decision from the publisher. They know the game isn't exactly packed with content and it's more for a quick burst experience. In that regard, it's a cheap and cheerful price that you can't really go wrong with. I'm not sure how much mileage you'll get out of it when playing alone, but it may be fun to pull out once in a while while you've got friends over. As for my final verdict, well, it pretty much echoes what I just said in the value section. It's cheap, cheerful game that you can't really go wrong with if you've got a few friends to play with. If you're playing on your own, then you might want to not give it a punt, as it doesn't offer too much to keep you interested. It's definitely multiplayer where it shines. If it had a bit more personality about it and a bit more visual flair, it would have gotten a higher score, but as it is, it's only just above average for an experience. I would award it 6 out of 10. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. If you're a regular Switch watcher, then you know what to do. Hit that like button and leave a comment. What is your favorite party game on the Nintendo Switch? Personally, I'd go for Astro Duel Deluxe. If you're new here, then why not join in and subscribe for the best, most honest Switch content on YouTube. You won't regret it. And also head over to the website switchwatch.co.uk for news, reviews, and features. It's well worth a daily look, guys. I've been Jordan from Switchwatch, and I'll see you next time. Take care.